Any type is a really valuable tool. There's a lot of potential locked within this beta application. But one of its downsides is that there's a lot of terms and ideas that can seem really confusing, especially because there's not a lot of consistency between how they're applied. There's objects, but every object has a type, but every object also has relations, and sets organize things by object types, but they can also organize things by relations. There's a lot of things to keep track of, and it's very easy to get confused. What I want to do here is answer a lot of the questions I've been receiving about how to use any type, what all this terminology means, and what's actually possible through the terminology. This is to serve as a foundational basis for all of my other videos, both in the past and ideally more to come. So let's dive into that today and look specifically at objects, relations, object type, sets, and collections. Everything in any type is considered as an object. Every page that you make, every image that you upload, every file that you upload, or even your own you know, profile picture, all of these things are considered as objects. Any type stores them exactly the same in its own file system, where basically it just says, these are all objects, these are all things in that workspace. So if you create a new page, that's considered to be an object, the same way as if you uploaded an image as the wallpaper for, let's say, my homepage. This page is an object, and this picture is also an object, and they're stored in any type as the same. What sets them apart, you might ask? Well, that's where relations come in. Basically, every object in any type has a relation, and the relation just has a value in it that relates it to other objects. Now, objects are gonna have multiple relations in them, that's just the way it works. But a good way to think about this is in terms of books. You know, if you have a bookshelf, you're gonna have all kinds of books on that shelf. You're gonna have hardcovers, soft covers, short books, long books, books of different authors, books in different languages, but they're all gonna be books at the end of the day. And so you could sort them by a lot of different means. You could sort them by hardcover and softcover. You could sort them by length. You could sort them by genre in terms of fiction or nonfiction. All of those different aspects of them are like relations of any type objects. So any type objects have a lot of different aspects in terms of when were they created, who created them, when was the last modified date, what kind of object is this? You know, maybe you want some relations in there if you had notes on books to denote how long it is or what the author is. They're basically just different kinds of modifiers, different kinds of information that deal with every object. Every single object has to share this buddy right here, object type. The object type is what determines how your object looks, how your object feels, how it interacts with other objects, because it all comes down to what that object is of. Let's go back here to the types pane. And you can see here there's multiple different types that are all locked. These come by default. And then any type has a bunch of other types that, you know, you could add on if you want. If we look at one of these, you know, it's got templates, it's got a lot of information about this. The only way that any type knows how to use this for a note is that you give any type the information of the type of object that you want to make when you create that object. So let's see this in practice. If I click this plus button right here to create a new note, it's going to give me some of my object types that are most common. These are just relations. These are the most critical relations they're going to have. Page, task, and collection are the most, you know, most commonly used. I can click on my types to see other types, but this, again, fills out what object type this is. So if I want to make a whole page out of this, I would click on the page object type. If I wanted to make a note out of this, I would click on the note object type. A pretty good example of how you're probably going to use this is that of human. Human is basically just how I would make, you know, a note on a person, so I could call this Frank or something. Basically, this is the object type designed for notes on people. And you're probably going to be wanting to make more object types in terms of, you know, a type for books, a type maybe for classes, maybe a type for, uh, you know, different stores for grocery lists. Object type is the critical relation for every object because it tells you and any type what kind of object your object is. Without object type, it would just think that all of the objects are the same. They basically just be like individual notes that you'd have to go through and edit manually. But instead, object type as a relation allows you to say, no, this object is similar to all of these other objects. Basically, because all of these other objects are type book, I want this one to also be a book because it, you know it's a note on a book. That might sound confusing. I probably didn't explain that super well. It's very hot in the room I'm recording in. The basic takeaway from this should be that object type is a way that you denote which kind of object you have. And it's the field that you fill out first when you create a note. It's how you decide whether you're taking a note on a book or on a person, or you just wanna make a dashboard page because that's going to determine what template the op because that's going to determine what template any type uses, how it's going to deal with it in terms of sets and collections, which we'll talk about later, and generally how it's going to be interacted with in your workspace as a whole. 
Now, sets are pretty straightforward. I'm going to click on this right here to see all of the sets that the vault came with. This is, you know, the default vault that was created. So this vault has a bunch of sets that are pre-made by the AnyType team when you start up a new account. Now, sets are just a collection of objects. But I'm not going to use the word collection because there's also a thing in any type called collections, and it gets really confusing really fast. Just think of sets as a way to organize your objects by a certain relation. Now remember, every object has a certain set amount of relations, and certain objects will have more. You know, a book note will probably have a relation that's its author. So you could organize all of your book notes by their author. Let's take a look at this in practice. So if I create a new note right here, I'd, create a pl I'd hit plus, I would say that this is a set, and now it's going to ask me for a name and a query. So right now it's sorting every object type, but I could click on this and sort it to only choose certain object types. Remember, this is when I said that object types are the most important relation that every object is going to have, because I can make a set, you know, that organizes all humans. And now it's just going to come up with me because I'm the only one in this workspace. But if I change this to be, you know, all images, then it's going to give me, you know, my profile picture, one of my wallpapers down here, some screenshots that I've taken. It's going to give me a bunch of different images. However, sets don't only sort by object type. They can sort by any relation, as you can see right here, add a relation. Remember, object type is a relation, but you know, so is added date. And then I have everything sorted here by the time that I added it. Or, you know, I could change this relation to be something like the artist. Basically, sets are a way that you can view all of your objects based around their relations. You can sort them by object type. You know, if you want to see only your books or only your to-dos, that's how this task tracker is actually built is because it's only sorting by object type of task. However, you can also sort by any other relation. If you wanted to see all of your notes based off of when they were created, you would use a set to do this. So instead of object type task, you would change it to something like relation da creation date. That's how you would go about using sets for that. The easiest way to summarize sets is that they're a way to organize everything by what kind of relationship it has. Now, if you'll remember when I was talking about sets, I said that I wasn't going to use the term collection because things will get confusing very fast. And they will, because collections, quite frankly, are kind of bad. They're not the best way to organize things. They don't make a lot of sense, at least to me. They're probably going to get better, but in their current state, they're pretty iffy. So a good way to differentiate the two is that a set is like a database. You give it a piece of data, it takes all relevant objects, you know, that apply for that data, and it sorts them in any way that you want. A collection is more like a folder, except the collections in any type don't really function as great folders, and you'll see what I mean in a second. So let's create a, actually just a collection here because that's going to be the easiest way for me to explain this to you. So I'll click plus, I'll click collection, and I'll call this test. I want to be careful because I've learned that my microphone is right next to, I believe, my shift key on my keyboard, and I don't really want to, you know, burn out all of your ears by trying to actually type something aggressively. So here's our collection. Now, as you can see, there's no actual sorting mechanism. If you look at any single set, it's going to have a relation. And that's how you know that it's a set because it's, ser it's searching by a specific relation and then it's going to be organizing things like that. Collections don't do that. They basically just say, you can put objects in here and you can put any object in here you want. So, you know, I could put a note in here and I make this a test note. And then I can add a plus here and let's say object type. This is a pretty good way to look at this. So this is an object type of note. Now I can add another object in here and call this, you know, a page and this is a test page. And then when I go back, you know, you've got a note and a page. They're sitting in the same collection. What does this mean? Honestly, not a lot. Basically, all this allows you to do is view different notes that you've created in a certain page. Um, you can do some interesting things with it, as in, you know, if you have a page just for all of your information from a certain class, and, you know, some of them are videos that you have recorded and put in your any type of vault, and some of them are notes, some of them are images, you know, PDF scans, you could put them all in something that you called, you know, like class notes or, you know, Java 101. And then you put all of your resources in there that are based off of that class. They can be pretty helpful. The main problem that I see with them is that there's no way to drag an existing object into them. Instead, you have to create new objects. So we'll see where any type goes with this. There might be some big aspect of them that I'm missing, but so far as I can tell, they're not going to be the most helpful thing in the world. But that's it. That's basically a lot of the terminology that you're going to come across with any type, hopefully a good explanation of objects, relations, sets, and collections, which are the main ideas behind any type that make it function, as opposed to something like Notion or something like Obsidian, which function pretty differently. The way any type is set apart is through these features. So hopefully they make sense. If not, please tell me in the comments and I'll try to, you know, make them more clear in my next video. But aside from that, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.